Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls and uh, as you can see behind me, massive modification there, we cut a big hole and uh, yeah, Janet was okay with it. We did clear it before uh, before going ahead and it's easy to cut a hole, but how do you go about finishing it? That's the key and integration is everything and all of these modifications that I've done throughout this boat have to now be integrated and, uh, and certainly made look like they never existed. Now this week I'm gonna be dealing with the inside of the hull extensions and the helm station modification as well. It's very important that we get onto that straight away. Let's get into it. So a part of the integration of my stairs into the deck is uh, it's going to get a little bit complicated now. Well, I've got a bit of a problem and that's right here. The steps uh, at the height that I wanted them and to keep them level, I made them level but now I need to cut into this and i've sort of worked out that if i make it flow back to here i can almost keep it to the point that it'll look fair into the back deck now the sad thing is the water is actually going to run this way a lot of boats um particularly some of the more common um uh, production boats will have a step that steps into the cockpit which is great because it actually makes it like a swimming pool which makes the water run away which is really good it's got drains and everything with mine uh i'm going to have this issue here where I'm going to have water collect here on the back step and I want it to run away that way of, of which obviously rain and, uh, and whatever else lands on here some of it is going to go into the back cockpit so there's obviously drains scupper drains that I'm going to have in there probably three or four of those to make sure that water gets away pretty quickly but my big issue is my big issue is right here you can see here I've actually got it level uh, in this corner here and in this corner here, but the actual deck has a natural slope to it. And uh, I was warned of this when I bought the mould. I was told that the uh, the back deck had a few uh, unusual undulations. So I'm gonna try to level this out. And what that's going to involve is um, removing all the gel coat here and sanding this back to about this area here and then putting some foam down and then reshaping this and then fairing it back into the actual deck. So the first um, part I need to deal with is right here. I'm gonna to try to get this sanded out. I've actually worked out with the spirit level here. Just this is roughly the, the level that this is and then it tapers away. And I'm, I've got, I had to pick a point. I've done it on both sides to make sure that I'm going to get you know, a reasonably consistent look. It's not gonna be dead accurate on both sides, but. Alright, so I have catalyzed this at two and a half percent. That's what I typically call a hot coat. Um, I want a really quick reaction here. And it's only gonna be one layer of 300 CSM, but then I have to get that foam to sit down here with no voids. So very important that you sort of get a really hot batch going. And, uh, and lots of resin. We need lots and lots of resin on here to make sure that it's gonna give me the bond to the foam. Uh, I don't like doing foam like this, but in this case, I've got no choice. Uh, the reason why I don't like it is because you sort of can't see what's underneath without putting down a bedding compound. I could use sea light, but uh, it's, I don't want any added thickness. Alright, so areas like this I can fill with my thickened resin and reshape this into a, uh, a blend of that. Alright, that's now in place and uh, it's looking pretty good actually. Plenty of weight on that. I've done the other side over here as well. And uh, that's a bits and pieces one, but that'll be fine. And uh, give it a few hours to go off and I can sand into that. Pretty good.
So feathering and uh, fairing are a bit of an art form and clearly I don't have it, but I'm essentially getting this pretty much right. I tried the belt sander, it was probably just a bit too aggressive, but what I've done is I've actually lost material here and that's cool because that's level there. You'll notice as you fair, like when you scarf plywood, you sort of lose material as you go, but I'm starting to get there. I'm starting to get a little bit here. This has to be a vanishing line down into here. And remembering also that I'm going to need a uh, good two or three layers of glass over this, so there's going to be thickness. So I don't want too much bulk in there, and I do want to fill these gaps here, obviously, with uh, with some um, some good quality resin and filler, uh, possibly some epoxy. But, you know, I'm basically getting this nice and level. I found much better with the orbital. Um, the uh, belt sander just chewed into it, and uh, and it was a pretty much pretty much a mess. But yeah, that's actually looking not too bad now, given given the massive discrepancy I had. I haven't started on the other side. It's actually um, yeah, 20 mil, so that's going to take quite a bit of work. But really nice to see this one coming in. Um, I should be able to glass this pretty much over the next couple of days. And uh, and, and then essentially the tie-in's complete. And then I've got to start to work on fairing and getting this finished and getting a, a really nice layer of glass over that whole back step region. It's tools at the ready. You gotta make sure you've got absolutely everything you need but once you get in there, you don't wanna be getting out too often. So I've got the vacuum, uh, roller sander, orbital sander, oscillating tool, respirator, phone, just in case I need an emergency to get me out of here. God, you'd need a crane to get me out of here. <laughs> and I'm going in. And uh, yeah, not looking forward to this day. This is gonna be a beast. But I don't complain, because you just gotta do it. It's just part and parcel of this whole gig. You want to enjoy the time on the water at some point you got to do the work all right so this edge here that is not laminatable uh, <laughs> not really a word i don't think but that you can't simply laminate that that's just gonna all end up with an awful awful um edge so that needs to be beveled probably at about 45 degrees and then rounded and every single one of these needs to be done so there's going to be a bit of work here I'll get started. I'm not really sure how much I'm going to do, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the oscillating tool and physically cut it, and that'll take half of the work out of it, and then uh, and then I'll get onto some sanding, and uh, the sanding probably won't take as long, the more the uh, more the cutting, but yeah, it's got to be done. It's just going to be an absolute bastard of a job in there as well, and also right up under here, this whole edge and down into there and then i'll have to deal with up in there as well so lots to do um not going to be pleasant but until i get these glass these edges i can't remove the timber framing and uh very important i get this framing out of this so i've got some more room to move and and start getting the other parts of this essential compartment in place Oh man, I'm over a uh, few hours. Pretty happy with it. It's actually just getting a little bit of a bevel on everything is the key. This sanding roller is the business though. It's just There's only one word for this type of boat building. Unpleasant. Disappointing. Actually, that's two words. Very unpleasant. And uh, I'll be so glad when this section is over because this has been a real 
real challenge. Oh, with that punishment over, <laughs> the starboard side is all ready to do the initial laminations and I'll be able to remove the timber frame and then uh, get back to actually finishing it all off. I'll sand it all and wherever the timber frame was, I'll be able to then laminate. Got to do the port side now. Um, I've got a couple of hours. I'm just going to do it. It's noisy. It's horrible. It's dusty. It's just got to get done. I've got my son, Sam's coming down with his friends to do a tour. So it's all very exciting and uh, I'm under pressure now, so I better get into it. Now last week I introduced you all to my bold grinding hack into the cabin roof with which to develop a custom helm station. Without so much of a plan, it began to develop some complex curves that would turn out to be harder than I first envisaged. My plan is to build this complete unit in situ and then be able to remove it, take it up to the factory and uh, fare and complete it in the factory and then simply integrate it back into the helm station. Uh, that actually proved to be a lot harder than I first thought it would be. Okay. Let's see if we can turn that into something usable. Yeah, it doesn't look promising, does it? Do you like my yogurt winches? <laughs> the stuff you do, like the, the templating is everything, but uh, sometimes it's just a little bit rough. Better off just with CAD, cardboard-aided design. So the trick is now I've got to carefully deconstruct this so that I don't damage this main piece. The top I can handle um, destroying, but certainly this bottom piece, I really want to make sure that I don't damage them. Hopefully, I'm going to get all these off without doing too much damage. Um, now, things don't always work out exactly as planned, so it's very important that you have a little bit of a margin for safety. I'll be cutting this a little bit higher when I lay it up on this sheet so that I've got some room to cut off and uh, to cut the excess off. The top part, not really that concerned about it at the moment. Getting the main shape of the face in the top, I can always bog in later on. But yeah, this should be pretty good. And I'm hoping this sheet that I've got here, um, which I used to do the big combing sides on the sugar scoops, I'm hoping there's enough material here to fashion this entire helm station. Right, so as is always the case, uh, the piece is not quite big enough. It doesn't matter how many times I try to turn it around, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave an extra inch on here and uh, just allow a couple of extra millimetres on the side here because I don't want to be bogging too much. And I'm also going to cut it short about an inch here because as it tapers around the front of the helm station, it's going to be a flat sheet. So I think if I do this... Now I had this vision that I'd have a nice flowing shape that would meld gently with the rest of the boat. Achieving this is a completely different story. Curfing foam on both sides to achieve the desired shape was definitely required and the process is not one that you just career into as the entire build went on for weeks as I pieced this thing together. Today is the start of that process. And as you can see me here actually curfing this foam gently on one side. I then had to flip it over and curve the other side to end up with that S shape that I was after. It's not often I'll forget to film and quite frankly the battery went flat, but I've started to get this thing together now, broken half, just as I was, uh, I'd probably bent it about 10 times to get it to the shape. So I've got three pieces and it's actually worked to my advantage because now I can really see how to get it in place. You'll notice I've got some screws there, just sort of pegging it out to maintain the conformity of that shape there. If you look over the top, I can now see Sort of a rough shape. I haven't certainly tied the top together, but this will end about here and integrate into this and, uh, and leave me with a good 
space or a good dashboard for all of my gear. The issue I've got here, if you notice, I've got a 12-inch um, uh, digital plotter that's going to be mounted here permanently. Uh, it's going to need to be off-centre. It'll need to be off to the side, sadly. The reason why is because I have all of my lines are going to be feeding down from here and uh, and obviously they're going to get in the way if it's there so this dash will likely raise up and then come up to about probably the height of my hand there with my big 12 inch plotter will be here and then i intend to have a smaller uh sort of a ramp here that's going to have my wind instrument my autopilot instrument my chain counter and all alike will be along here and certainly out of the way but uh, that's been a bit of a job doing that, and uh, yeah, it was one that simply couldn't be filmed. Quite frankly, I'd bore you shitless. But if you look here, I've actually pegged it out, and that's been a pretty good method for me. I use it, just screw in. Uh, the the issue is I'm really going to have to deal with all of this gel coat here and get rid of all this because I'm simply not going to need it. I might need to leave this part here, but certainly around here, this area is likely to be removed because there's going to be a motor of the uh, of the winch in that area there, and certainly I do need to be able to get to it. So actually accessing that is going to be problematic from behind. And now that I've got it in place here, you can see here, I'm probably end up going to have to uh, put a hatch in here, some sort of an opening uh, with some sort of a hose pipe or something for all the lines to go down into there. So that's my plan is to um, secret all the lines away into there with the winch obviously self-tailing back this way we don't want self-tailing going overboard we want it to go inside now i made a comment the other day about trying to keep the look of the boat consistent and not going for square and right angle type uh, helm here particularly with all the modification i'm doing i'm really trying to keep with the curves and the natural lines of the the design of the boat and as i chop and change it is getting difficult but uh i need a plinth or a platform for the winches and I found that. Now that is the off cut off the stairs that are down there and I'll actually use this shape here as the cap for my helm station and uh, tie that back in. It's, it's just nice to be able to, um, to not so much reuse what I've already got but it does a lot of the work for you. It saves you having to reinvent the wheel all the time when you've already got existing stuff. So I'm gonna trim this down uh, and just see how it fits. And I may end up not using it because this here has to be very, very strong. It's going to have to support all of the tension of all of the ropes. And, uh, and in fact, more so up here, the, the clutches will carry the weight or the uh, the tension of the lines but the actual winches need to be able to sustain the incredible forces i'm going to put on it given i'm going to be dragging the lines across from the mast down into this area so whatever is here can't rip up and we've seen a lot of videos where winches are mounted when they're on shelves where they're actually levering and uh and having to be subsequently reinforced so i intend to reinforce it at the best to start with so that I don't have to go back and retro do something. But this whole area here now needs to be tidied up. I'm pretty happy with this shape. I'm gonna live with it for a few days before I go chopping and changing again. Very important that you um, don't rush headlong into something that uh, that is gonna basically have a negative impact on you a bit later on.